Hello, hello, and welcome to the Borealis Experience. I'm your host, Aurora, and I'm very honored and excited to have Moritz Kerkmann Hood with me today. I mentioned him a couple times on my podcast already. He is the coach who back then ignited my healing. He helped me out so much and, yeah, led me onto a a beautiful healing path. He is a man coach today and helps men to connect to themselves and to learn how to communicate their feelings and desires better. He's an intimacy coach. And um, when you go visit Moritz, then he will make sure that your relationships are way deeper than they were before and and just yeah connect you to yourself um and this is why i'm so incredibly excited to have him here today because in a couple episodes ago i talked about how important it is for your mental health to know about your own sexuality to be aware of who you truly are as a sexual being And Moritz has all the words, all the knowledge and wisdom um, that, yeah, he wants to share with us today. So I'm very excited to to hear your thoughts, Moritz. Welcome to the show. Um, And thank you so much for making the time. Um, Mm -hmm. If you want to fill us in a little bit, like maybe first how you became a coach, how you became so interested in becoming a coach for men uh, when it comes to intimacy and sexuality. You must have felt a deep need, a deep desire, and we would like to know more about it. Yeah, thank you so much. That's a beautiful introduction. Um, yeah, my, my path... Um, I think as we as we just said, I think you and I worked six years ago. This is like time time flies. And um, the way I got to this path was, I think through, I think through suffering basically, um, through having a lot of turmoil and issues and trouble in my own life. Uh, I had a um, after. After going to school, I basically traveled to uh, Paris and um, started off on a career in in photography. And uh, I had my first burnout, I think, with mm, 23. And I was I was very addicted to alcohol. Um, drank about one and a half liters, uh, one and a half bottles of, of wine every, every night. And um, yeah, and depression was something very severe in my life, like something that was very present. And yeah, I think back then I didn't really know whether I was able to live a life that was um, happy and joyful. And yeah, so it was, it was kind of like just an endless chasing after, um, I would say, excitement and, and good feelings through drugs and alcohol and those kind of things. And um, yeah, I think a little, a little fairy um, whispered to me that I need to change something about that. Or I needed to change something about that. And um I think that fairy actually had to whisper it to me in many different <laughs> ways before I started listening. <laughs> uh, but that's just what it is. It's like we, we hearing these things through different channels until eventually the pain gets so big that we really like start to um, try something different or, or look at the reality that, that what we're doing and what, what we are, yeah, what we're doing with our lives isn't really working. And um, yeah, for, many many years and i would say still to this day i'm i'm working on these things and i would say that this is a 
this is a path that is a, it's a goalless, it's a goalless path. It's an, it's an endless path. It's a constant working and uh, looking at what is the truth mm. for myself, not the ultimate truth, but the truth for myself. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. And, and I would say it's like a, it's a bit the path. I think I experience it more like an onion. It's like, we don't really find the truth. We just discover what actually is bullshit. <laughs> and then you start to peel it away one little bit at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, thank you for being so transparent and, and filling us in. I feel a lot of people who are giving back, helping out others today uh, had to go through hell first to experience it firsthand and to know, okay, this is actually how it feels like. I'm not going to mm -hmm. learn it from a book, how to help other people. I'm going to learn it by having to go through it myself. Um, right. How important would you say is um, your sexuality when it comes to mental health? Um, how important it is to know about it. I mean, some people live a very asexual life. Uh, some people live a sexual life, but are very frustrated. Some people are very, um, to which degree would you say, does it affect your, your well-being to mm. know about your sexuality? Well, I think sexuality is such a, it's such an interesting topic because It's like this, it's, it, it's like, it's one of these high sensation topics that just have a, a double, it's like a double edge in a certain way. Like it can, it can either border into the direction of being an addiction, or it can be bordering into the direction of um, withholding this kind of pleasure from yourself and starving to death. Mm. Right? Like, it's like, we either, we are either sexually starved or we are overstuffed. Mm -hmm. and i think that that's that's what makes this topic so two-faced like it can appear like the devil or it can appear like the like an angel to you and mm -hmm. um it's a it's a highly polarizing um topic and i think any topic that is so highly polarizing has a lot of potential to um have you grow as a person mm -hmm. and um And work your mind in what is truth for you and what are ways where we are um, deluding ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then sec the other thing about sexuality is, is like there is a certain need to it. There is a like I th I think it's a it's a fact that we that that we need sex sex that we need sexuality whether we need the act of sex mm -hmm. or not is it is it i want to leave that to the side for a moment but there is a certain um reality to the fact that um without sex we wouldn't be here mm -hmm. right like no one of us would be here without without sexuality without the energy of sex without the like sex is the first energy that like ushers a new person into this world in a certain way. And um, so there is a certain necessity to it. But then there's also all the other aspects that are connected to it. And, and one of these is, for example, I mean, it's, it's just think about as a man, the hunger and the lust that you have towards a woman, like it draws you towards the woman because life itself wants to reproduce itself, wants to actually calls on you to create life. Right. Mm -hmm. But then also everything that goes with it is like your energy as a man, your um, your the way you walk, the way you feel confident, like all of these things are um, are connected to your sexual energy. Mm. That makes so much sense. And it's a it's a way of expressing yourself as well and if you are living in denial of it if you're trying to suppress it if you have like 
bad memories with it and are yeah trying to not Mama. have it in your life anymore um you're missing out on an opportunity to express yourself and it's it's very right, healthy, right? i can right well it's it blocks not just the actual act of sex but it blocks also um your whole energy as a person yeah yeah and that is so underestimated like if you look at marriage uh when people have been married for i don't know 10 years 20 years and they think yeah it's just it's just not that important anymore but there's always a part in you who's like mm, am i actually being honest to myself or is it important but i'm just too scared to talk about it again and like right it's it's really it's so why is it so difficult to talk about it um do you think it's more difficult for a man to talk about desires or is it the same for women as well why is it so hard to express desire i don't i don't know if it's if it's harder or easier for a man or a woman i I have nothing that I can compare it to because I don't have, I, I'm, I'm just the gender that I am at the moment. But I think that, so there's a, I think, so the, to me, sex is very connected to, to desire. Mm -hmm. And And desire is, uh, to me, this is a whole different subject. This is not easy to understand, but because it's so com it's so complex. Desire is so complex. Like I might have a desire to have a car, right? And then like I judge that as materialistic or a house and I judge that as materialistic. Or I have desire to um, to kiss you or to... Um, go out for dinner, right? You can look at all of these things and put them into different categories as like, oh, that's your sexual. Um, those are the things you want sexually. But how do you know that the car isn't actually also part of the same realm, the same sexual desire, whether that is in order to actually become the person that attracts the kind of woman that your DNA is looking for, Mm. or a house that will provide the kind of container that actually allows your partner to open up and have sex with you. Like, I mean, think of birds. Like, they first build a nest and then they have sex, right? Mm -hmm. And I look at it in the same way. I think that every single desire, whether that is my clothing or my material desires um, or a desire for nourishing my body with a particular kind of food, right? It all goes back to that, um, to that initial cell that like mm -hmm. thrives to grow. Yeah. Right. And so if I have judgment in any of these areas, it, it blocks me from creating what I, what I am, what I'm here to create, right? What I, what I desire to create, the life that I want. Mm. And I think there's a, there's, a, there's a holistic connection between all of those things. And there's a certain, um, there's a certain order also in these things. Mm -hmm. And if you start to like look at this as like, a, it's just a certain kind of like form of energy that wants to come out through you, you can start to be less in the way of it. Mm. This is, And the yeah. being less in the way of it is what actual vulnerability is about. Yes. And then expressing it and allowing it to come up and to right. not judge it. Exactly. Yeah. It's one thing to learn to not judge, us, judge it yourself anymore. And another to be scared of other people's judgment once you express it and to have that confidence to know that, yes, this is what I desire and I'm going to communicate it and I don't give a fuck if it pisses off people or not. I'm just going to 
stand up for it is um, it's such a courageous act as well, not just vulnerable, but also very courageous, right? And liberating, yeah, yeah. totally liberating. Absolutely liberating, yeah. Yeah, I totally understand. Now, what you described earlier with building a nest, that forward forward movement, it, it felt like you were describing masculine energy there. Um, to come to my next question, what do you think are we as a society getting wrong about masculine sexuality? Or what is it you feel we urgently have to learn um, if we want to be intimate with a man when it comes to sexuality? Is there, mm. like, with your clients, do you see like a red line? And, and do you see a pattern of, of things that could go better in relationships? Yeah, yes. And um, so first of all, like the the example that I that I said before, like the example of like building a nest, I also want to get rid of it again, you know, because I don't believe actually that there's one particular um, direction, like that everybody should get like that sexuality is just in service to having children, right? Yes. I don't actually believe that. Yeah. I think, I think our sexual energy is just is just creating. It's the, it, it's a desire to create certain things. It's it's desire to create this reality. Having kids is just one aspect of it. Yes. And so, the reason why it's so courageous is because we do conceptualize these things. And then we say, let's say the Bible says men and women should only come together and not homosexuals, for example, right? Like there's a certain um, conditioning, like an idea. Mm -hmm. Why is that? I mean, like my neighbor builds a house, right? And then like he tries to protect it. And only if the, the, his neighbors build in the same way, right, is his thing safe. If someone builds something that they don't understand, it becomes a threat. So that's kind of like this kind of like we build something and then we have an inbuilt protection mechanism. And, and that protection mechanism is also the thing that conditions us into everybody should do the same thing mm -hmm. because that's ultimately what is safe. Mm -hmm. And that is why it's so courageous to really listen to your true desire rather than to the conditioned version of desire. Because mm -hmm. your conditioned version of desire will say, build it exactly the same way your neighbors and your family and your mother and father have done it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's liberating to um, go within yourself to one particular place. And that is the place where you start to listen to what is really true for yourself. And it takes a lot of work to figure out what is just the, what is my authentic voice inside me? And what is just this never ending mantra that I has been handed down to me, right? And then learning the different, to differentiate. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you start to be in tune with your authentic desire, It is very non-rational. It isn't following a pattern. It is saying, I want this. I don't know why, but I want this. And tomorrow you want something else. And after maybe a few days or weeks, all of a sudden you look back and you're like, oh, now I see how that made sense. But you kind of have to just like follow along and trust that like, there is a certain kind of like electric current and that's actually how I identify it. It's like the truth is electric mm -hmm. and it's uncomfortable. And it's this kind of like, I want this, but I don't dare to say. Hmm. And if you follow that, you get to create something that is unique. And so here's a bit, when it comes to, men um 
whether it's men or women. I think men are more likely to um, be rebellious or to go after what they hunger for. And women, I think women are starting to break out of that. Mm -hmm. And I think we are starting to live in a time where like women get to be like, not women get to be bullshit. Women are taking a stronger stance for what they really want. Mm -hmm. Right. And and you, you kind of have to do that. Mm -hmm. So, so I think when you ask the question, what do men want in bed? I think for you as a woman, that's a dangerous question. Because in that moment, you fall into the conditioning to please the man. Mm. Hmm. And you, in that moment, you lose the attention on what you actually want. Oh. So this is very new to me and I have to ask. My focus then should stay on myself, on my desire, on what I am receiving from the man and not worry mm -hmm. at all about what he wants because He's going to follow his desire anyways. Did I understand that right? I don't know whether he does or doesn't. Like, it might be or it might not be. I, I, I actually, personally, I value both. I value a man who really follows what he wants mm -hmm. and is a no to, like, the things that he doesn't want. Mm -hmm. But I also value a man who actually feels right with himself, feels good inside himself, and who is capable to have his attention on um, on the electric current that the woman actually has. Oh, see, and that is something that you don't learn with porn. You don't hear about. And television or Hollywood, I feel. Do you see that movies um, usually portray like a very one-sided uh, picture of a man? Or because I'm learning right now that there is like many, many different ways of approaching sexuality and that men have both like two sides as well, if not more. Um, from what I've learned about sex, I would say it was very one-sided and not diverse at all. And I'm learning so much with you right now. Um, what is it you feel women could, could take away from this and men as well? Um, when it comes to intimacy, um, something that you feel mainstream media is not seeing talking about. Yeah. Do you know that moment when you, when you, let's say like you have sex with someone and then you get to that point where you feel sensation in your genitals. Mm -hmm. And then what we do is, oh, there's sensation. Let's, let's get wilder. <laughs> right? Because we want, we want to, we want to, like, we want to build that sensation up towards the goal, which is the climax. Yeah. What I invite everyone to do is, when you feel that first, like, this is always the thing, like, everybody does that. Like, you, you connect in sex, and you're looking for that first moment where you feel sensation. Mm. And then once you find that, you speed up because you are looking to get to 
the, the climax, right? The or what mainstream calls orgasm. I don't call it orgasm, I call it climax, which is just the peak experience where you have ejaculation, where you have this big explosive sensation, right? So you get to the first moment you like your genitals connect and after a while of fucking you find that moment where you feel something and instead of speeding up slow down mm. mm -hmm. and you will notice that instead of rushing to the climax what you start establishing is it's like it's like rubbing a balloon against your head and then you try to make a little and then you pull it a little bit away and you can feel a static current yeah. in between the balloon and your head have you ever done that as a child mm -hmm, of course yeah so instead of like Smashing it and rubbing it harder, which would kill the electric current, actually, and yeah. maybe pop the balloon. Yeah. You actually just see whether you, like, how far can you draw this thing away without losing the feeling of the electric current? Mm -hmm. And you see if you can ride this. How long can you hold this connection mm -hmm. and what you will what you will take from this is that you can hold this to the point of walking away from each other you can hold this to the point where your partner is blocks or miles away and you still feel their you still feel a connection from your body to their body. Mm. And everything in your life starts to become respective, respective of keeping that electric current inside your body alive, keeping that connection inside your body alive. Mm -hmm. And that will, that will set your whole life right. Because you will start to notice what takes you away from this connection and what keeps you inside of this connection. Yeah. And that will basically, it, it will revive your body. It will bring electricity and life into, into places of depression or into emptiness or into loneliness. It will just start to fill you up. Mm. Man, this is so beautiful not only to listen to you but also to see you like you you talk like an artist like a magician and it all totally resonates with with my soul um incredible how you just described that and i i'm sure our listeners were able to follow as well even though they could not see you um what i love most is that you talk about the goal setting and being goal less right just what mm -hmm. you described with your healing that you are goal less when it comes to your healing and with sex it can be very similar that you don't rush to some destination but that you are present in the moment and allow things to happen like magic can only happen then when we're not focused on a goal is that like do i understand that right yeah yeah i mean if you have a if you have a goal in mind what the the like here's the thing it's like this might sound like very um like spiritual but actually it's it's actually not at all it's 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 very simple it's this that if you If you sit on your, if you have a goal in mind, you cannot actually feel what you like, what is presently happening. If you say, I want to feel joy or I want to feel excited, but you are not right now, right? You are like aiming to feel this particular way. Yeah. 
So now I ask you, so, okay, you want to feel this way, but how do you feel right now? Yeah. And then most people, are, uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's the problem is because, because of the goal, you cannot be present. Yeah. Because you want to feel a certain way, you cannot be connected to how you actually feel right now. Yeah. And so the, the issue there is you're not really having sex. It's like because your whole attention is right now attached to being in this particular place that you miss the whole show. And that's when all these issues come up with like feeling a lack of meaning in your life, feeling like nothing really sen uh, satiates or satisfies you. It's mm. because you're not really there because mm. of the goal that we mm -hmm. That makes total sense. Now, we're getting, we're getting closer to, to an end here, but what I would like to ask you last is um, now desire and goal Like if we are aiming towards something, let's say, if, not to say goal, um, like how would you reward goal setting then? Because there is benefits to it. It can help you to be consistent. It can help you to be disciplined. But I totally get your point of, of missing the whole point if you are too far um, like focusing too far into the future, but how would we reword it um, instead of using goals? And you don't have to deny yourself that you have a goal in mind. You, this is a different angle on it. That like, you know, a meditator who's like now becomes a becomes a breath, uh, like focus. Every focus goes on the breath and nothing else is true. Like that's also not, that's also not reality. Like mm -hmm. you do have, we do have goals, right? We do crave, have cravings. We do have desires to like, they are all um, sort of aimed into a certain direction. Mm -hmm. But it is the, like wanting to get there and forgetting that the present moment is actually what's really happening. Mm. That's a problem. Yes. But being also just in this moment and denying that we are headed into any direction, that's just as much a, 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 a uh, delusion. Mm -hmm. Like have you, when you speak to like meditators, you often get the feel that they sort of lying to themselves. Hmm like really rigid meditators. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, that's true. It's like, you don't disconnect from your desires. Mm -hmm. You don't disconnect from the goal. It's just like, all right, I noticed that there's something that I want. And then also like, I'm really fully connected to what I'm, what I'm actually dealing with right now. And when you can hold your attention on both, that's when, that's when you start to become agile and it's fun and you can move and facilitate things and you can play right and 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 that's why like i like because i think you asked um about um male sexuality and like and and pornography i don't regard pornography as something bad uh neither hollywood right like they are depictions of um, like ideal ideal things like mm. right like they are a depiction of climax happening every time you have sex there is a like intense climax or the woman always intensely opens up and lets the man do whatever they fucking want right or in hollywood like it's always a happy ending right like just look at it for what it is it's a it's an idealized version of something it's not the full truth yes but that's important if you yeah if you go into it like i know that porn for example has shown me certain games that are possible to play if you have 
consent if you know how to do it right if you have a play partner who is actually open to these kind of things and wants to explore in that way then like wonderful you have learned something there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yeah i totally understand um what you mean about the playfulness and creativity uh i don't want to say but i want to say and um and say but. <laughs> <laughs> to keep a healthy distance to know that yeah this is uh disneyland disney world And this is not always reality. It is inspiring. It is fun. It is sometimes disgusting. Um, yeah. But that doesn't have to be the norm. And, and to know that this is not what women expect. This is not what all men expect. But it's kind of fun to explore. I totally agree. I totally agree. Um, wow, well, actually, I, I know a lot of, um, I know a lot of people that do expect And women do expect, and it's actually, that's, um, if you go into more sex positive communities, you, you find people that are very in approval with their expectations. There's a very common thing in sex positive communities where couples looking for a bull, right? That's like high, a high stamina kind of like man who can just like, To be a machine right <laughs> and it's the thing the thing here is um and i think that's like i think that's like a it's like a theme also is there's a there's a large group of people that are against porn that hate porn and um and i'm not defending porn i really don't care I, I don't care if someone hates it. I don't care if someone disagrees with me. That's totally fine with me. But I am coming from a place where I say, I look at this more internally and I say, why do I hate it? Mm -hmm. What in me hates it? Mm -hmm. There's a certain upset, right? The same way, and if I just turn this a little bit around because I don't like to talk at women for their hate against porn but let's say i speak about men hating women for not giving them what they want right that's the that's the flip side of the coin mm. it's like well so me hating those women right like who don't want to give or whatever like so what inside me is that hate right it's like it's like It's like the upset that I don't get what I want. Mm -hmm. It's my little inner five-year-old who's throwing a tantrum that I'm not getting the, 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 the treat that I wanted or the red ball that I've seen in the window, right? It's like, mm -hmm. there's a certain reality to this. I can actually be with myself in those spots and learn that in order to have something that I want, like the red ball and the, in the shiny red ball in the window or the sexy woman in the red dress, God knows what it is you want, but you seem to not be able to have it. Instead of resenting that thing, I can look at myself and be like, well, so what in me prevents me from having a relationship with that thing? Mm. What in me is it that like gets so upset that I cannot have it? There's a certain reality to like, oh, they want me to be shiny or they want me to be looking a certain way. Okay, do I want to play that game? Mm -hmm. Is it this much worth to me, right? Like if I want to have a Ferrari, like, like I don't want to have a Ferrari. I don't really care about a Ferrari. But like if I would want to, I have to ask myself seriously the question, am I willing to step into the kind of games that would get me that Ferrari? Mm -hmm. but then get fucking right with it rather than get resentful at the world for not handing you everything on a golden platter. Mm -hmm. mm, I love that. It's a very and, mature way of looking at it. I like it. And I think when it comes to the hate of porn and the superficialness, I think often it points to an upset that um, someone hasn't given you the kind of attention that you are looking for. So you hate the superficial because some part of you didn't get seen, didn't get cared for, didn't get met 
in a more vulnerable way. So you have to hate the superficial mm. because you think that's all that is available. Mm. I think that's so interesting in general. Like, ask yourself, why do you hate certain things? Why are you in resistance to certain things? Not only porn, uh, that's a big and great example, but but all things. There's always a story behind that is interesting mm -hmm. too to hear hey doza wants to say hi <laughs> oh this is so good um what would you like is there something we want to conclude is there something that you want to add um after everything we've addressed today um something that you want to yeah give to my listeners um and right after we want to know how how people can reach out to you and where you post your beautiful posts and yeah, how people can reach you. But before mm -hmm. that, is there anything you would like to add when it comes to masculine sexuality, intimacy? Yeah. yeah. I think the, I mean, like this is not necessarily the, the only path that leads you to um, getting into a, a deeper connection with yourself, but that's what it is about. It's like getting into like a, into more intimacy with yourself. And, and um, I think any kind of intensely polarizing topic, whether that's sexuality or whether that is depression or art or, um, I mean, relationships, like all of these things, they are, they all are a path mm -hmm. to have a deeper relationship with yourself and all of the feelings that you have towards them, they, they can all be a potential to get to know to yourself. And I think that is what is making these things so interesting and so meaningful really like and i i just encourage anyone who has a um some kind of like emotional topic going on that they regard this topic as something that can actually be a gift and a gate to um more depth to yourself mm. yes yes i totally agree and i'm so incredibly happy that we were able to record this episode together because I knew you were going to be the the best person to talk about um, these very important things and things that are part of everybody but it's just difficult to yeah understand them at times to talk about them and to to make sense um, so I'm I'm deeply deeply grateful for for you being here would you like to share with us um, where people can reach out to you and um, where people mm -hmm. can read your posts. Um, that would be lovely. Yeah. Um, I think at the moment I'm most active actually just on Facebook and mm -hmm. um, my name there is Moritz, M-O-R-I-T-Z Kirkman, K-E-R-K-M-A-N-N -N, and then Hood, H-O-O-D. Um, I also... I'm active on Instagram. Um, yeah, and the way people can work with me is I have two membership groups. One I lead with my wife. It's called the Building Honest Relationships Group, where we work with couples and um, help them really build authentic relationships that are based on personal freedom. And, um, and the other offer that I have for men is the School of Intimate Leadership. And um, yeah, it works with all the things that we have just talked about. And of course, I do one on one work. But um, I would say those um, two groups are probably the best entry level to get started. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, anyone can just reach out to me on Facebook or on Instagram and, and write me a private message. And I usually answer very quickly and just start a personal conversation yeah that sounds amazing all right you wonderful people out there don't hold back reach out to moritz if you 
feel ready if you feel a need to get to know yourself better. And or if you have a desire. Uh, yes, desire. <laughs> And uh, you, my friend, you have exceeded my expectations like usual. Every time we talked in the past in Germany, um, I always felt like, ah, Moritz has a different angle on this. And I love how he expands people's minds and opens up people's hearts. Um, thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs>